Hi, and welcome to another old steam-powered machine shop. It's been a long haul, but uh, it's finally operational. And this video is for all you guys out there that supported this project from the beginning, and still are. Uh, we got this thing going. And uh, ran it today, and uh, was quite pleased with it. Had quite a little bit of a tussle with the uh, belt adjustment, and I figured it would have, but uh, finally got that fine tuned and I uh, ran it for about an hour today. Got a lot of video to show you. Um, the counter shaft, uh, I had to adjust it and change the belt around and change the shifter around a couple of times. One mistake I made was when I put that 18 inch pulley up there, before I put it up there, I should have machined it flat, taking the crown out of it, and I still may have to do that. Because uh, that's the driving pulley for a tight loose arrangement that has to be shifted, and the belt doesn't want to go over the top of that crown as well as it would if it was just flat. So that's one thing I might have to change. Um, So other than that, we're looking pretty good. We've got the shifter set up on it, and uh, that took two solid days of figuring and playing around and making parts, and then making more parts because that wasn't right, and then change it around and putting stuff upside down and right side up, trying to get this thing to work right, and it does now, no problem. So I'll show you a few excerpts from uh, getting all of that straightened out, and then uh, run the planer for you. Thanks a lot. appreciate all the comments and uh, questions and uh, uh, likes and subscriptions. And uh, we'll talk to you later. These are the U4C12 clippers, 11 seconds through quarter inch. And this, when I got it cut, measures uh, about 9 30 seconds. So we're in the range for that style. unibar laces because they got this extra little piece of wire that's spot welded to hold everything together and you don't got to mess around with the paper. Okay. That should go. I want to use this crimper and it's a six inch belt. And as it looks, this is only five and three quarter. So this is really only rated for a five inch belt. So I gotta use it on a five inch manual one that I've got in the vise. Okay, so this is the four inch clipper lacer that I usually use on everything. The only six inch belt I got is on the, the big steam engine and I did it with this one uh, and this is exactly for six inch. It's just slightly, it's about one wire short of six inch.
there's supposed to be a spring that holds this apart, but it's long gone. All right, didn't quite, didn't quite push it all the way through. Pretty good. So. It's strung up on the pulleys. There's a little bit of a bad spot right there. It's going to take a little Gorilla Glue. But other than that, it looks pretty good. So now you got a little bit of a guessing game here on how much you need to take out of this in order to make it tight. This, this is not leather, it's canvas, so it's not going to stretch much. Uh, but I'm going to run it for, just get it tight enough to run and then after running a while it'll probably take a little bit of a set so I'll probably have to take it down and release it anyway. So i got to figure out about how much I'm going to take out of this and uh, cut it, put the lace in, roll one side off the pulley, put the pin in and then roll the belt back on the pulley. I tighten it up a little bit and that's about where it's got to go. I think I'll move both pulleys to the right here just a little bit. That'll give me about maybe four inches of clearance on the boring mill and a couple inches of clearance up there against the uh, other counter shaft for the power hacksaw. Right now the lower run of the belt is about seven feet above the floor. So there'll be a board, uh, kind of a guard underneath it across here eventually. And also I'm going to be looking for some different hangers that are shorter, uh, about two inches, maybe three inches shorter that'll get this whole counter shaft up higher. I don't particularly like these this style hanger anyway. I'm a little limited by the clearance here on the steam line, but I can go two inches, no problem. So I'm gonna go uh, I'm going to take it up about an inch more from where I have it clamped right here. And I will probably have to relace it after it runs a while. Okay, I got I got the belt off of run off of both pulleys. I'll put them on and we'll be back.
looks like it's going to run right down the middle. This is the belt shifter fork blade. Uh, line shaft is still disabled, so I got to do it on this. Some of the hardware I made for the shifter, the belt shifter to shift the belt on the tight and loose pulleys. It'll be a three quarter rod. These are the shift blades. This has got to be, these have got to be welded on. But, uh, be adjustable belt goes through here this is the outside bearing I slotted it so I can adjust it up and down so it won't bind and to get around the corner this is a bell crank that I forged out of a piece of wrought iron at the blacksmith guild a couple weeks ago and uh, that will change the motion from perpendicular to the bed to parallel with the bed. So we're coming along. I'll show you something here. This is the bracket to hold the rod that moves the shifting fork for the belt shifter back and forth. And my friend Noel was in the shop the other day. <clears throat> I said, I need some way to keep this shaft from rotating so that it holds the shifters from moving around. And I'm trying to figure out a way to do that. And he says, well, why don't you just put a slot in a long bushing here and put a pin in it? So it'll move, but it won't turn. Jeez, that, that's a pretty good idea. So I did. And then I ran a countersink, a uh, 60 degree countersink, down at each end of the slot. And this is a small block Chevy rocker ball for the rocker arm. It's got a kind of spherical end on it and it fits down in that place where I uh, relieved it there. Put a spring on there and a washer and a nut. Now you got a detent. When it goes to the full stroke that way it drops down in that depression and the same on this end. Because on some of the other ones that I built it has a tendency to kind of vibrate over and engage itself. So I had to put a like a friction deal on it which works sort of. But this this is a very positive Detent setup. Here it is up where you can see the shifter and the rod. I made a clevis to connect this rod, bell crank over here, another rod going to the lever. Still got to tighten up the bell crank and oil it up a little bit.
making a new stroke dog as I showed you on the last video. This is the cam that slides on the table that uh, will change the direction of feed or the direction of the table. And this one is made out of cast iron and it's been broken and welded a couple of times so I'm making a new one. So this is a piece of steel. I'm going to weld it up out of two pieces. Actually probably three. Uh, this is a piece of hot roll steel. It's probably inch by uh, six, something like that. It's longer than I need. I'll cut it off. And I'm going to make this part and it also the back side has got a uh, uh, fin on here that goes down in the T-slot and uh, put that in there too. I'm just going to square this piece up. second side on this one. Well this edge right, this surface right here is going to be this surface right here. So I ground up a tool out of a piece of high speed steel and it's uh, it's perfectly straight this way and perfectly straight that way put a couple degrees uh, clearance a couple degrees break a couple degrees bottom break and I'm gonna feed this over uh, one inch uh, 380 that's what this distance is here and I measured it on the table and that's what it is so that's the plan
piece. This is a piece for the wedge. It's an angle cut on here. A piece of junk stock had a hole to it. And it's going to machine right through it. This is now welded together. I uh, welded this with 6013 AC on the ends and I had it clamped with a piece of one inch square both ways so it didn't warp at all. <clears throat> so that fits on there. I think before I get too carried away I'm going to drill this hole for the uh, T-bolt. Okay, there's the stroke dog.
thought I'd just let it run rather than try to talk over all the gear noise. The big gear on the other side is worn pretty bad and uh, I'm almost sure somebody made a new pinion. So you got a new gear running against an old gear and, and the sound seems to be amplified through the gear itself and uh, it's really pretty noisy. Um, this is a piece of cast iron that I put on here just to experiment with. It's actually an old bench center uh, and uh, I got it clamped on here with a stop and I'll show you more about how I clamped it. Uh, I'm using a round nosed uh, roughing tool with pretty good uh, rake and a lot of clearance and uh, I'm not getting a real super finish because it's 30 thousandths per or 20 thousandths per step. Each one of these notches on the ratchet is 10 thousandths and it's going, and it's going two at a time so that's 20 thousandths per, per stroke and uh, when I first set it up I had this backwards. Uh, this can be changed from one side of center to the other so that the actual step over occurs back here in the uh, space that it comes back uh, when it reverses direction. So that's correct. Uh, what else? Had some problems getting the belts adjusted. Uh, it would want to hang up uh, with both belts slightly on the driven pulley at the same time, which the line shaft does not like at all, and it kept uh, throwing the belt off, the long belt off. And I finally saw what it was doing, and it doesn't take very darn much. Just if a quarter of an inch of that belt is hanging over, If just a quarter of an inch of this belt is hanging over on the drive pulley when the other one is trying to shift behind it, it will sort of lock the thing up momentarily and stop it. And so then everything comes to a screeching halt and the belts come off. So it's just a matter of fine tuning the adjustment on these uh, shift forks here. And I think I got it pretty darn good. Uh, I have had no belt slippage so far. In the cut, I've taken some fairly deep cuts, not anything near what it's capable of doing. This is the pulley that I set up with the uh, brass pushing in it that I bored out of the way. It's got a grease fitting on it, and it just sits there and spins on the shaft when the pointer is disengaged from the system. Shift forks are up on the upper uh, run of the belt, and they work with the rod, and I'll show you. Get more light over here. That's about the next thing.
move this pin out further to the outside and increase the stroke of this lever, which would make the rack gear go up further and turn the ratchet gear further to make this ratchet catch more teeth.